Good evening, everyone. Hello, and welcome to tonight's MMM event. I hope you can hear me well. Can I have a thumbs up if you do? Yeah, awesome, great. So welcome. This is MMM number 22. Believe it or not, we're really excited for today's event. And uh, before we start, as usual, I would like to start with uh, thanking our wonderful translator and announce that we have translation once again in the Russian language. Tonight, our translator is Mariana Sokurova, and on the screen you can see how to access translation either from your computer or from your mobile. I hope it's working fine. If you have any issue, please um, ask our host Andy for help, and he will do his best to help you out. And I'll also like to uh, remind you uh, to please make sure that your Zoom name says your um, uh, name and surname. Um, the same way that you were um, that you um, registered on MMM so that we know who is behind their screen and it's easier to also make the discussion groups as usual. I will go more into depth into our schedule later. But for now, I'd like to invite, as usual, our wonderful Patricia to offer the opening prayer. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. And uh, please join me in prayer. Dear... Beloved Emily parents and true parents, we are so grateful that uh, we can be here together, couples from all over the region, Yume, and actually even more from abroad tonight to discuss and to listen, to have guidance on a very special topic, which is how to connect deeper in our families. This is such an important topic and is uh, so needed. We really need to develop uh, um, a good heart toward each other inside our own family and going behind judgment and really living for each other, living for one another as a blessed couples. So we want to invite you as a special guest tonight and we also would like to give a, a wonderful welcome to this beautiful sister that uh, is so passionate about this topic and uh, wish you the best with us tonight in our MMM discussion and meeting. We pray all these things together as one family under God. In my name, Patricia Kerschbaumeyer, Patricia and Franz Kerschbaumeyer, and all the blessed couple present here, our Jew. Uh, Drew, thank you so much, Patricia, for always okay. starting our meeting. And uh, now, um, before we go into uh, the first uh, the speaker of today, and I, I introduce them and we go into the topic of today, I'd like to briefly mention what MMM is. Every month, we are so grateful that we have new registrations and new people that want to join. And so we like to explain how it works so that you uh, have your bearings. So MMM stands uh, for Make the Most of Marriage, and it's a BFD UME initiative that aims to create a thriving community of fulfilled blessed couples. Uh, we aim to do this by offering monthly online events. There are actually nine a year, um, so that blessed couples from anywhere around the region and even beyond, if they like to join us, have a chance to meet other blessed couples, learn from other blessed couples that are the speakers of the night, and share with other blessed couples afterwards in the discussion groups so that they find someone to connect to, support each other, and create that um, Heavenly Parents Holy Community that we are named after. And um, before, um, besides me and uh, Daniel, our other MC, there are other wonderful people behind our team. Um, and I want to always um, thank them and, and praise them as well. So you can see on the screen a wonderful team. From left to right, we have Abby who does a lot of the PR and uh, emails with the speakers and her husband, Victor, who helps by making the groups uh, during our events. Uh, my husband, Andy, who is a wonderful host tonight and is also our coordinator. And there is Daniel with his wonderful family in the center. Uh, he's the other MC that you, you might have seen if you've joined before. And Patricia, who offered the opening prayer and also um, envisioned MMM at the beginning. And our BFT director, a wonderful Orlande Schenk. So this is the team. And how does the evening um, look like? How does the evening work? So um, after these few um, announcements and reminders, um, we will have, I'll introduce the speaker of the evening and we will have a main talk during which you are free to send in your questions to our host, Andy. And then we will have a short uh, question and answer session uh, with our speaker. 
And then we will take a short break to um, have, relax, have a break, but also to reflect about the questions that our speaker prepared before we go into the second part of the group discussion, where you can meet other couples, ideally in similar situations of you. That's how we try to make the couples together, uh, make the groups together to put couples either like parents of young children with other parents of young children, newly blessed couples with other newly blessed couples and so on and so forth. This is why we're really grateful when you uh, register and fill up the full registration form. So we know uh, to give you the best chance to find people that you have a really big common base with to have a good discussion. And um, yeah, that's it. We hope you enjoy. And after each event, we are very happy to hear your feedback. And I will go into that at the end of the day. Uh, so you let us know how you liked it and if you'd like to come back. So for today, as Patricia said already, we're going to have a wonderful speaker and a wonderful topic. I'd like to introduce Mirna, Mirna Lapre. Mirna has been a teacher and an educator for over 25 years, but her passion is working with individuals, parents and families to strengthen their connection and find better ways of relating and communicating. She has worked as the director of Sunday school, was the assistant pastor for two years and served on a team of first and second gen organizing workshops, in-show programs and summer camps for 20 years. She is interested in combining her understanding and skills that she has gained throughout study, practice and coaching together in collaboration with other groups and organizations. She's working together with other coaches to offer education and tools through a monthly Zoom webinar entitled, Self-Care is Not Selfish, Heal Yourself, Heal Your Family, Heal the World. She self-published a book on Amazon at the end of 2021 entitled, The Seven Gifts to Give Your Child, Parenting That Will Touch Their Future. As a trained safe conversations facilitator and a certified relationship and family coach, she gives workshops that support individuals, couples, families, businesses, and organizations to learn how to talk without criticism, listen without judgment, and connect beyond differences. She and her husband have three sons, three daughters-in-law, and one granddaughter, as you can see from her family photo on the screen. And tonight, she will be talking about creating connection and belonging in your family. So without further ado, welcome up, Mirna. Hello, and I'm so uh, happy to be here. I didn't know you are going to show that picture, so, so that you'll see that's the first one in my slideshow. Um, but uh, I'll tell you more about it as we go along. I have uh, now all three of our sons are blessed, and I have one granddaughter. And um, about 10 years ago, I became a coach. I had been a, a teacher for many years, and I worked with parents, but I really wanted to be able to support and empower parents, and especially in our church community, to take the things that I'm learning back to the divine principle and our UC teachings, and to strengthen our connections within our families, because I believe, you know, that's the best witness to our two parents is that we have healthy and thriving families. And as um, was mentioned, I, I also uh, published a book and maybe this one is for, for, I guess, parents of any age. And it's also a, not a religious book. It's open for any, um, anybody um, and the world that we're raising children and grandchildren in today has changed tremendously since I was a kid um, people are living longer there's more three and four generation families and yet as a global community sometimes we live far from our extended families and also technology has change the world forever. Kids today don't know a world without devices and all the personal uh, potential challenges that come with that. And yet, regardless of all the technological advances, parents will always be the, more, the most important source of information for their growing children and even for grandchildren. Um, children's greatest sense of security comes when they feel secure in the knowledge that their parents love each other. Our true mother said that Children learn, feel, and resemble their parents' most valuable examples of love and the basic order of life. Children need a model that they can learn from and follow. So really, as a parent and a grandparent, I think it's important that we work 
on modeling the kind of behavior and the kind of love and connection that we want our children and grandchildren to inherit. And when children see their parents loving each other in a respectful, trustful, and positive manner, they have a much better chance of having that same kind of relationship with their future spouse. And um, I think it's never too late, even if our kids are adults, for us to, to uh, as the parents, be more loving. Recently, I overheard two of my sons talking. They didn't know I was listening. And they were talking about how they noticed how much my, their dad and I get along better and don't argue as much these days. So they notice these kind of things. Um, and we have many examples of our two parents treating each other with love and respect. So I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I was born to parents who were believed strongly in stewardship, peacemaking, and helping other people. I'm the, I'm the tallest one in the back there next to my dad. Um, I was actually born in the center. My parents were unit leaders for the Mennonite Voluntary Service uh, in Texas. And I was born in a maternity center that was built there by the Mennonites to support um, that really high mortality rate in that community to help support families. And I have lots of good memories of my family going camping and doing other things together. But the house that I grew up in had a lot of tension and negativity. And my mom had a tough job with four kids and my dad was gone a lot. He was a, a hospital chaplain and a pastor. And so even in the evenings, he had meetings and she did lots of fun projects for us, but she also would get overwhelmed. And I never knew it was unpredictable when she would get upset with us. And when my dad came home after giving to and counseling people all day, he often didn't have enough to give to us. And I grew up believing that emotions were scary things and I didn't want to trust them or express my feelings. And this isn't about blaming others, about blaming my parents, that this was just my experience. And the result of that is that I became a doer, getting my value from being a responsible person and getting things done. And I pushed my emotions down, but you know, that's not realistic. We can't really do that. Every now and then I would erupt like a volcano. And um, I met the church, Unification Church in 1978. And it turns out that my upbringing was really uh, prepared me to do missionary work, to work really hard and to sacrifice. And I was blessed in 1982 to my husband. And looking back, um, you know, we had th three sons. And looking back, I think that I was a pretty scary person sometimes. Um, you know, trying to live up to all the expectations of being a good member and a mother and a wife um, and feeling overwhelmed myself. And about seven years ago, my husband and I moved across the United States to Georgia. And this was the first time that we were true empty nesters. Um, all of our kids were either working or in college. And I left all of the things, all my hats, all my doing hats, I left them behind in California and I didn't know what I was gonna do. And as I was exploring all of this, I realized that um, I did many things, including loving my husband and my children out of a sense of duty. And I had to figure out how to, how to change that. And I, even how to love God and how to love other people, how, that it was uh, many, many things I did out of duty. And I kind of stopped doing things for a while in order to figure out and re-examine and learn how to choose to do the things that I wanted to do. And after 30 year, over 30 years in marriage, um, my husband and I started reading the real love books by Dr. Greg Baer. I can tell you more about that resource later if you're not familiar with him, but he wrote many books, Real Love and Marriage, Real Love and Dating. Um, and uh, we attended a weekend retreat at his house. He lives in Rome, Georgia. 
And my husband and I began to studying the um, Real Love in Marriage book, and it changed our relationship. And um, I think that Greg Bear, who's a Mormon, has a lot of a lot to offer our church in understanding true love, what it looks like in relationship. And then eventually I became a relationship and family coach. And I'm on this journey of healing myself and helping others. I, I would say that I'm a wounded healer. And so throughout this talk, I want to give a few tools that I have learned. And um, the first one is one that my husband and I learned many years ago attending a parenting class called Growing Kids God's Way, and it's called Couch Time. And it's simple. You and your spouse sit and talk to each other in the presence of your children. Um, this is probably most appropriate for somebody who is, you still have children at home, but um, the, the focus is to create a connection with each other. And by doing that, by making your relationship a priority, then we are modeling that, modeling that to, to our children. And you start small, maybe just three to five minutes at, at a time, once or twice a day. And even if this is a great practice, even if you don't have any children at home, just making your, your relationship important. Because connection is really key. The relationship is the heart of the matter. Um, our relationship to our children and to our, our spouse is what is how we can actually have influence and guide others. And we can't just talk about things like um, what's right or wrong, or, um, you know, e even I think many of our, our second gen grew up with the talk about keeping your purity, but not the why behind it. And it really has to start with us uh, living our lives and modeling the kinds of things that we want others to inherit and creating connection and building trust. I really like uh, American author and researcher Brene Brown and she said, connection is the energy that is created between people when they feel seen, heard and valued. Sorry. Um, I can't read the rest of it. You can read it because my the, <laughs> the translation is in front of it. But it's when we are seen, heard, and, and valued that we create that kind of heart and connection with each other. When we unconditionally care about our spouse, our children, our grandchildren, there's this powerful connection between us. And they feel included in our lives. And they feel important and safe and whole. And we can create this like powerful bond. And actually current research shows that the, the lack of connection in, their, in one's life is the one of the greatest root causes of all addictions. I'd like to share with you a video with um, some research that was done in 1970s in Harvard University. This comes from, um, the, the safe conversations training that I do, but it's also very applicable here. Okay. So in this experiment, which they don't do anymore because I think it was too stressful for the, for the children, um, we can see what happens when there's a disconnect or a break in that connection. And actually this re is replayed over and over in our lives. It's not just children, but it's um, when something, uh, there's a break in our connection, there's a distraction, um, there's uh, some kind, sometimes it's things, a death in the family or a sickness or a war, but sometimes it's just a simple misunderstanding between two people that creates this distance and those that they care about, and it can cause a rupture in the relationship. If you think about it, a recent argument or misunderstanding that you had with someone and how that disconnect feels. And if we think about it, 
this is actually what happened at the time of the fall. And the first parent-child relationship was lost between heavenly parent and his children, this disruption. So the, the stages in a relationship, there's three basic stages. We're all born into be, to be connected to our parents or caregivers and then disconnection happens. And then we work to reconnect. And connection is really our um, great, our deepest desire and losing that connection is our greatest fear. Another tool that I learned while studying um, through, through Real Love with Greg Bear is practicing to tell the truth about myself, ourselves. So at many times we uh, like to appear better than what we, we are. And we like to hide our mistakes so that we appear better to other people. And we even sometimes wear masks to cover up the mistakes that we've made or the pain that's inside. But learning to tell the truth about ourselves allows us to be seen and accepted and loved in spite of those mistakes. In real love terms, it's, call, it's called with loved with our warts and all. And when we are loved and seen and accepted, then we can be more loving. So practicing this simple tool is actually um, part of helping us to be authentic in our relationships. And I believe this, this, this um, real love work discovered by Dr. Greg Bear is well, that he was inspired by God. He's a Mormon. Um, and it really fleshes out what our two parents talk about true love in our daily relationships. And as we learn to tell um, the truth about ourselves, then we create opportunities to be seen, loved, and accepted for our, who we are, but then we can do that for others. We are more able to be um, more loving when we feel loved and accepted. And we can also learn to see mistakes or misbehaviors in others and in ourselves as learning opportunities, opportunity to recover and to learn from the, mis the mistake. I want to tell you a little bit about my oldest son. This is Daniel, and he's 33, and this is his wife, Marina. They were blessed just last month in April. Um, and my relationship with Daniel uh, had a lot of ups and downs. And when I moved to Georgia, um, he already lived away from home uh, in Kansas, but I re realized that he was allergic to me. Um, I was trying to give him too much advice about how to live his life and the choices that he was making. And of course, he wasn't asking me for this advice. And um, I had a lot of expectations. And I, through studying about real love, I realized that my love was very conditional. I wanted the best for him. That was my motivation, but I wasn't trusting and believing and empowering him to be his best self. And my husband really um, helped me to learn how to listen more and ask questions of him and um, talk less. And, and actually I made a condition for one year. I wrote him a letter every, once a week. And in the letter, I just, I just share what I was learning about myself and I express my appreciation for him. And I told them about my um, regrets about mistakes that I had made in, in loving him in the past. And I told him about how proud I was with him. And, you know, he never once acknowledged that he, or told me that he received those letters, but gradually our relationship changed. And I believe that my uh, changing and supporting him was part of the um, part of the process for him to find the right person to be matched and blessed to and to accept and love him. So Marina lives in the States, but she was is originally from DR Congo. So learning to listen more um, might it might look like, first of all, learning to ask, can you tell me more about that? When some, when our child or someone else is telling us something, rather than just chiming in with our opinion about something, 
we can say, hmm, that sounds interesting, tell me more. Also beginning to ask permission before telling um, our child, young adult, what to do. We can say something like, oh, I could see how you might think that. Can I share off some of my ideas? And it's important to, if the answer is no, to respect that. But also we have to learn how to love beyond difference, even if we don't agree with their opinions and choices. And um, the, the relationship of any two people is the relationship and the space between. So what we put into that space Im impacts the quality of it. Disconnection or connection happens in that space. If we put in criticism and judgment, we get disconnect. If we put in support and appreciation, then we get connection. And learning to model unconditional love in our relationships with our spouse, children, and others is important. But it's difficult to do this if we haven't experienced enough unconditional love ourselves. So sometimes we need to uh, practice with others that we don't have as much baggage with. I've, I've been in and led a number of real love groups where we studied, we read the book and we studied together and we practiced telling the truth about ourselves and feeling accepted and loved. Belong, belonging is the intrinsic desire to be part of something bigger than ourselves. And true belonging comes when we are unconditionally loved and accepted. So belonging is something that we really want to create in our families. We all need touch, connection, and to know that we matter and that we are enough. Um, as parents, we can establish a family culture that fosters love and belonging, but it's most effective if we're coming from a place of feeling loved and embraced ourselves. So if we need work in that area, then we have to find ways to heal ourselves, to heal our past relationships, to forgive the, the hurts or wounds that we might be carrying with us. When I was on MFT, we used to have this habit of um, carrying these small books. They're called Way of Tradition books. I don't know if you had these in Europe, but of Two Fathers Words. And then we would say a prayer and open the book to get our reading, um, our personal message for the day. And many, many times I got this quote, before you can save the world, you have to save yourself. And I don't think that means that I'm supposed to wait until I'm perfect uh, to be able to serve others. But I think it's an important reminder that we have to, in order to love others, we have to learn to love ourselves and learn to accept ourselves and see ourselves from God's point of view. And in Mark, um, the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. So if we can't love ourselves, it's gonna be difficult to love others. And also um, Carl Rogers, American psychiatrist, has said that the curious paradox is that when I accept myself just as I am, then I can change. So that, that's the idea of learning to tell the truth about ourselves um, and accept ourselves for who we are and realize that um, we're not that bad. Sometimes we try to make ourselves appear better or wearing a mask to cover up our inadequacies. But when we accept ourselves for who we are uh, and then we can accept others for who they are, and then we have a, the freedom to be able to change. So there's a, a lot more I would like to share, but I want to just give you a few, touch on a few highlights. Um, there's been so much research done in the last five to 10 years about the brain. And um, the, the, one of the news, newest news about the brain is that the prefrontal cortex, the upper part of the brain, where we make all of our good decisions and choices about, actually, uh, continues to grow and in, in um, it's not mature. The brain is not mature until 25 years old. So that's why sometimes young adults don't always make the best choices. Um, they're still learning and growing, but uh, having healthy relationships helps us have a healthy brain. And that's the, where we make the win-win kind of solutions possible. And also through safe conversations, as I alluded to, um, I've learned how much, how important it is 
to become better listeners. Usually we listen to respond and we only hear about 20 to 30% of what another person says. So listening in order to understand creates connection and empathy. And, under, and then that's why I said, you know, it's good to say, oh, that sounds interesting. Can you tell me more about that? Because then we become curious about what another person is, is saying. Also, um, another tool that I, that I teach parents um, is the power of the family meeting because, you know, all organizations of nonprofits of any kind have meetings to figure out how to work together. And the, the family meeting is no difference and it makes the family a priority. And also it should be a place of having fun together and really creating those, that connection to each other and if your kids aren't living at home anymore, how about having a family retreat? We have church workshops all the time. Why not have a family workshop or a family retreat where the purpose of it is connection and um, creating greater connection. And also our um, past impacts our present relationships. When we can heal our wounds and uh, our pain, um, then we can change the things that have been passed down even to us from our ancestors. That's part of restoration. And parenting and grandparenting offers the chance to reparent ourselves. And um, when we get, when we react or get triggered, we can think of it as something to pay attention to, an awakening. So we are born in relationship. We grow in relationship. We are wounded in relationship but we also are healed in relationship. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mienna. I see a lot of uh, clapping and I join in. That was a wonderful presentation. I really love how you had so many good tips <laughs> and it was very relatable. For me that I, I don't have children, I bet it was very relatable to the parents of young children and those of us who have older children and maybe related to how you described your relationship with your own son. Um, thank you very much. I, I wrote down the tip about couch time. I think that's beautiful. I never thought about, um, I always heard about, you know, having couch time or having a check-in with your partner daily or often uh, for the sake of their relationship. I never thought about it being also for the sake of the children watching you invest in your relationship. I think that is so smart and, um, really combines the two things and so beautiful, as you said, how true mother also said, our relationship impacts um, also how the children see us and how everyone sees us. So really influences others more than what we say, as you said yourself. I also really love the tip of asking for permission before sharing advice. Um, I think that is really precious. And uh, of the family retreat or family meeting. So thank you very much. Uh, now, if it's all right, we have received some questions, so I would go ahead and ask you for more tips. <laughs> Even though you shared so many, always good to have some more. So somebody's asking, uh, how do you deal with the pain of someone that does not want to see and accept you over and over again? Um, I think that you know, doing, we can't, we can't make other people love us. You know, we can't make other people want to uh, be together with us. So I think uh, always when there's some kind of deep pain with somebody like that, it usually means that that's not just that person, but there's something from my past you know, maybe of not being acknowledged or not feeling important. So I think working on that, of healing that, um, helps us to recognize uh, and fi also finding other people who are supportive because we need other people to care about us, but sometimes the people that aren't responding, they're not the ones that are gonna do it right now. So finding some kind of supportive make having a small group um, or with the intention of learning how to uh, heal. There's a whole area of, of inner child and, and recognizing, 
you know, that the things that, that hurt me the most oftentimes has something to do with experiences in our past. And many times we forget about those experiences. Um, it's, it's something that uh, I think having the intention to heal myself, also to forgive other people, you can't, you know, forgiveness isn't just for the other person, it's for me. So I don't have to carry around that burden of frustration or resentment or anger or whatever. I had that experience with, with my mom. Uh, my mom is still alive. She's 90 years old. And um, all this stuff, when I started to write my book, I was thinking, okay, how much of do, I, do I share in this book about things without being disrespectful to my parents? And anyway, I really um, tried to heal that relationship. Not, I couldn't do it directly with her. But the funny thing is, I went to visit her this past Sunday. She lives three hours away from me. And she told me, oh, I read your book. I'm reading it for the second time. And I'm so proud of you. And she never really said that at all in, in her life. So I think sometimes it's spiritual. You know, some of it is if we hold on to that hurt, then there's no chance of healing. So I don't know. That's the short answer, I guess. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, it, it's a really complicated question and uh, very personal. So thank you very much for, for your answer. Um, I hope that that really helps the person who asked. Um, a next question. I also feel like my child is allergic to me, but I don't know where to start. So I guess tips on where to start, <laughs> maybe letters like you did or? Well, okay. I think that um, it depends. If your child is, is willing to talk with you, then um, do, or to do something together, to go out for a meal or to go to a beautiful park or something, but don't just, just be present and ask them about their life. Don't say anything about, you know, I think we have to practice um, not having any expectations. When we have expectations that it should be a certain way, then we, that means our love is really conditional. So I think you have to find maybe some kind of common ground. Um, if the child isn't um, willing to, ch to talk or whatever, you know, maybe sending cards or letters, but also just, I think praying and meditating and learning how to also to love myself, then I have more to give. So I think all of those are, are part of the picture. So both working on my relationship with myself and being, saying the truth in a way, being truthful to myself, as you said before, so that maybe we can yeah. also change well, and also... Yeah, one thing that my husband and I did when we when we moved to Georgia, we were far away from all our kids. So we got together at Christmas, we got an Airbnb, and we um, also visited my parents and stuff. But but we made some intentional time together as a family, and we talked about uh, like remembering good experiences from the past. And then we also said uh, what we've been learning about from real love, and we we. The, we even apologized and said some things that, you know, that we regretted. So I think that takes some work, some groundwork to be able to do that if your kids don't want to all be together or whatever. But th I think that's what I meant by having a family retreat. Um. Yeah, that could be also maybe in steps, maybe some and then again, and then maybe someone else will join next time. I don't know if that's uh, recommended, yeah. but maybe if you have a big family or everyone is far away, maybe realistically. Or they don't want to be in the same room as you said um we just had a, a follow-up question to the question i asked uh, i think i might be allergic to my parent i am willing to talk but i feel unheard what can i do um yeah i think it's tough when we like i said you know I went through many things, but my mom wasn't ready or willing to talk to me about stuff. Um, I think that when we, if I work through stuff enough, then I can begin, like, don't think of it as this big breakthrough or this big session. Sometimes it's small little things, you know, even just um, saying, well, actually, I asked my parents to tell about 
I, I forgot a lot of things about my life. So I, we looked at photo albums and I asked them to tell me the stories about these pictures. What were we doing here? What were we doing there? How did this happen? I don't remember this. But if that's not possible, then, um, you know, I think you have to uh, sometimes sharing what you've been learning. I've been learning this about myself, not about you, not about my parents, but I've been learning this about myself. And, you know, I regret that I, I, we didn't have a closer relationship or maybe, um, you know, sharing things a little bit at a time, writing an email or a letter or a card. Um, I think you have to find a way in. It's, it's not, I don't know if it's just one answer, but. Mm -hmm. For sure. Would you, would you recommend some, um, maybe during the conversation or before even starting the conversation, letting the parent know, I just want to share with you. I, I'm not looking for advice or I'm not looking. I just want to talk to you. I just want you to listen. Or is that too confrontational? Um, I think that depends on your parent, you know, but, um, but yeah, I think finding a way to sort of say it up front or to say it in a, a joking or, you know, um, manner or um, maybe ask, their, ask your parents advice about one thing that you really would like to know and then say, you know, mom or dad, um, I, I really believe that you raised me well and you did, gave me a lot. And the, some of these things I just have to figure out on my own. Uh, so saying up front sometimes is necessary. Um, Wonderful. And, but sometimes, sometimes you just have to realize that other people, when they're acting badly, they're, they're hurting. You know, sometimes we have to see other people for that they're also wounded and in pain. Um, you know, maybe asking about your parents' life also gives you insight into how they were raised and what they had to deal with growing up. Again, it doesn't mean that they necessarily change, but we can have more empathy then. Yeah, absolutely. I guess learning to, yeah, uh, learning about them, understanding, yeah, where they came from and, and uh, maybe also that way their parenting style a little bit more, maybe that even more when you are a parent yourself but maybe you can imagine a little bit wonderful thank you so much for answering our questions Mina, and thank you to those that sent them in if you have any more questions please feel free to still send them in and we'll have a small um q a as well if needed at the end after the the breakout groups um and now it is time to uh, before we go and split up and we go into the break sorry um, we can go through the questions so that uh, you can uh, also reflect on them during the, uh, the uh, reflection time or uh, break time. You can also find them in the email that we sent out today with the Zoom link, and we will post them in chat. But first of all, uh, we can read them all together. So the first question, as usual, is to introduce yourself. Um, you might already know the people that you're in a group with. If you've, it's not the first time you participate, you might be with the same people. You might want to skip this. But then... Uh, the, the questions that Mirna prepared for us are, what is the one thing that you can do to create more connection in your family? And what points in the presentation uh, did you identify with the most? And finally, what would you like to do to start taking better care of yourself, moving away from self-judgment and towards accepting and loving? So thank you, Mirna, for these wonderful questions. Now we will take a, a five minute break. You can see the timer on screen as well. So you know when to come back. Please have a good break. See you soon. So I was saying that I hope you had good discussion groups and uh, that I thought you did because you had camera on and uh, that mine was lovely. I met some new people and I met some people I, I knew already virtually and it was great. It was a nice uh, wives group. How was it for you, Mirna? Were you in a group? And yeah. yeah. I was in a lovely group with, um, I'm not gonna butcher their names, but it was very good. <laughs> we were three white haired ladies, so. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> and I, I hope that we can hear from all of you how your discussion groups were through the feedback form afterwards or in the next few days so that we can find ways to improve the experience for you. 
and uh, make it how you you really want it. So, Mirna, uh, now is the chance. You have the chance to let the people know if you have anything to recommend, to uh, advertise, or is there anything that you would like to to mention? Um, sure. I have a. Let me share my screen here. Um, So I have um, some ongoing programs, but the I'm doing one specifically that's, oops, what happened here? Sorry, I did it wrong. Um, I'm doing one that's specifically uh, for European time. Um, so it's gonna start on June 20th. And it's actually a combination of the, the different tools that I use, Safe Conversations, Real Love, Inner Child, and it will be a seven week course. Um, there is a fee um, and you can find, uh, I'll put it in the chat, but you can find more on my website, which is coachmurna.org. Other ways to develop greater connection and love is to create a group with anybody that you feel close to and to work intentionally to be able to understand more about yourself and your connection with other people. You can have a book club. If you have younger children, you're welcome to use my book or any real love book or any book of, of your choice. And, um, you know, practicing to understand more about ourselves, learning um, how to see ourselves from God's point of view and um, to build connection and relationship help, helps us to recognize how our past impacts our present relationship and how uh, a big thing for me was learning how anger creates rupture and how, how to you know talk about what I'm frustrated with rather than get just getting angry at people and so um, I have other things I have a blog I have other things on my website um, but uh, the building connections in relationship is a specific course that I'm promoting uh, that starts on June 20th. And I will put the, the link to it in the chat. Wonderful, thank you so much. So you uh, please check the link in the chat or otherwise we can also send out uh, um, as well some uh, more information on this course in the next email. So look forward to that as well if you uh, want to find out more. And um, I would like to give a sneak peek for about uh, next month's event as well. So as we come to the close of today, um, I'd like to uh, tell you uh, to please save the date for June 21st, when we're gonna have our next uh, event, our next MMM event. Our speakers will be uh, David and Mitsuo Wolfenberger, once again, another speaker from the US, and their topic will be intimacy. Tajo still to come, exactly, but that will be the topic of their talk. And uh, as I said already uh, many times, please uh, do fill out our feedback form. If you're interested in letting us know if you had a good experience or not so good, or you'd like to volunteer as a speaker or anything else. And um, if you would like to um, also check out some more resources, I always like to mention as well the BFD website um, where you can find um, uh, either MMM project uh, recordings or Hundakes or a list of uh, BFD staff that you can reach out to. And uh, you can as well, as I said before, reach out to us, uh, and to us and ask for support through the form as well. So many ways, please do. Um, like finally, it's time to officially close the event. So I'd like to give the word back to Mirna to offer the closing prayer. Please join me in prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Parent, for this time together that we could share about our own experiences and also understand how there are there is hope and there are tools and uh, to create greater connection with each other, within our families and um, beyond. You know, connecting to our brothers and sisters and our, that are near to us or in other parts of the world. We ask your guidance and your inspiration and always to remember that in any relationship, parenting or otherwise, that we are in partnership with you, Heavenly Parent. Offer this prayer now in my name, Myrna LaPrey, Placental Family, Adju. Adju. 
Thank you, Mirna, for closing. And thank you also for your wonderful presentation. Thank you to Mariana for translating in Russian. Thank you all for coming. And for those of you who still have time, uh, the rooms will be reopened. If you'd like to continue your conversations, finish your conversations, or chat a little bit more, um, please feel free to use them. And uh, for those of you who leave, then I hope to see you next month. Have a good evening. Bye.